So before I get too far with this, anyone who's there who knows me fairly well will know my Mac is dying. I've <laughs> got my old MacBook Air running Ubuntu now, and it's, it's like a 2011 MacBook Air, and it's now, because it's uh, the Mac OS is no longer supported, I've put uh, Ubuntu on it, and it absolutely flies, but I haven't moved everything over to it yet. So as a result, with the demo that I did today, uh, I screen recorded it over the weekend and just paused out the bits where my machine was just chugging along. So rather than a live example, I've got a seven-minute video that I'll play. And Bree, I knew you'd be excited when you heard that I've moved my dev environment to Ubuntu. I couldn't quite do Arch Linux. Um, it, 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 I did it over about 20 minutes, but I cut it down to six or seven. Otherwise, you just would have spent ages seeing my thing go. But I can say that uh, Tom absolutely flies on Linux, so I highly recommend running it there. So Tom, I'm not sure if any of you have worked with it or heard of it, but uh, I'm representing myself rather than my employer for this one, just for to have a bit of fun to actually talk from my own perspective, which was good. But um, I did start using it there to uh, try and generate some very large websites very quickly that I needed to post without having access to a database or an application server. And at first I thought, oh yeah, cool, can make some static assets. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized it's actually a really cool ecosystem that's been developed and there's a lot to it. So Tome is a set of Drupal modules that allow you to use Drupal locally. And from that, generate some static assets. So obviously some components like web form or uh, filtered views are a bit trickier, but Generally, you can do a lot with static assets. And as I did with the time I used it, I used static assets and then just inserted in um, Algolia, which is like a mini React app, the way it in injects itself. And you get a pretty dynamic, pretty cool app because you're kind of using Drupal to do all the data modeling and then just sprinkling in interactivity with whatever JavaScript you want to use or JavaScript framework. So that's how I've been using it. But the more I've looked into it, it's actually really quite cool that it can produce JSON content as JSON that you can then commit and really have like Git controlling all of your content. And um, you can get it to sync. And it's got some modules for like syncing with Netlify. So effectively, there's Netlify have some pretty cool free tiers for hosting, not that I've used it. And in my example, I use Amazon S3, but you can effectively use Drupal to do data modeling, all of your content management, and then create some assets and just deploy that directly to Netlify and you know, not have to worry so much about security and a few other things like that because they're just static assets. So the Tome ecosystem, which is just here at project slash Tome, contains a whole bunch of um, related assets that go with it. Um, that includes uh, term static, which makes the static sites sync content, which allows you to sync your local with uh, a, a remote server, uh, push to Netlify. And I guess one of the really cool parts that um, Sam Mortison, the maintainer of it, built is he built this thing called Luna, which is a JavaScript. We didn't build Luna. He just built a plugin for Luna, which is like a JavaScript search engine. So Luna is like solar, but dimmer. And it allows you that you can you still push out a big static site and then just run a search index over the top of it. So effectively, you're getting a fair bit of extra bang for your buck straight out of the box. So why would you use Tome rather than just running a static, I mean, just running a Drupal site? Well, if you've got a use case for static hosting, this is going to be perfect for you. It reduces maintenance on sites that don't change much. So if you've got a site that, you know, you've, are a little bit more set and forget, or perhaps it only gets updated fairly occasionally, then why have a database and an application and all, all of that hassle? Um, means you don't have to be as worried about security releases, which is quite good if you're not a very hands-on and can make you a bit lazy, but I personally have got most of my sites tomed at the minute, so I don't really need to look as often, but it can get you a little bit behind as a result. Um, and look, you can be all in and use Tome Sync and store everything as versions content that you controlled Git. 
or you and you can use the uh, Drush commands to do everything, or you can just pretty much do the whole thing with the UI. And in the example, I use the UI. Um, and it's kind of a little bit reminiscent of the old Drupal 7 days where you didn't really need to do it. I mean, that said, in my example, I do actually install a Drupal 9 site with Compose and run it on Lando. But once it's running, <laughs> um, you don't really need, you can do it all through the UI, which I think is quite nice. So how did I get involved? Like a while ago, I heard a Talking Drupal podcast where I heard him, uh, Sam, the maintainer, talk about this project and thought, well, that sounds really cool. Um, and when it, because I've been wanting to get more into static site generation for a while. Um, and I always thought one of the kind of things that held me back a little bit is that you often need to have markdown, fi markdown files held everywhere and the barriers for entry and trying to keep consistency across the markdown just seemed like, oh yeah, it's okay for simple templating. But what if I want to do some pretty hardcore data modeling, which is in my sector, which um, is usually working in kind of museums and galleries and libraries and that, you usually have pretty complex metadata schemas per object. And you kind of want something that's to look after your data modeling a bit more. So oh, this could be pretty cool. So and then when COVID came, I had to really produce something very quickly um, to get a beta product out for testing. Um, I didn't have a suitable hosting environment at the time because um, I just needed to push this out and I needed to do all the work myself. So this just became like a really good instance to really dive into it deep. So the more I've used it though, the more I've been really impressed with how it works. Um, so I think I've discussed all of this through my random rambling, but uh, there's a bunch of modules. There's a search uh, index, the JavaScript search library that comes with it. Um, you can export either um, via the UI, which is not recommended, or via Drush, which is recommended, although in my example, I use the uh, UI. Um, you've got the ability to preview the site from Drupal as well. So you can you know, obviously look as your content generating with the preview button, but you can preview the whole static asset and then you can deploy it. And there's some examples of what Term brings you, including a Netlify deploy, GitHub pages, and it's got a, a Gatsby, which is a little bit rough. And the one I use is AWS, but I just use the AWS CLI um, interface to, to push up my assets. So as I said earlier, my um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a screencast that I did on Sunday, and you can kind of see up here. So it starts at two fifty three. So I the, I did legit do this in in a one sitting. But the part I didn't record was me installing. Um, so at the time I installed Drupal nine via Lando, and I just finished installing Tome, and that's literally uh, or and I activated the Oliveri uh, theme, Oliveri theme. So um, yep, I've I've installed that. Um, and you can activate via the UI, but what I choose to do is I just show that I'm going to go via the user interface and select Tome, which is the base that you need. And you've got all of these other assets on top of it. As a minimum, you need to select Tome, Tome Base, Tome Static, and Tome Sync. I forget to select Tome Sync um, and the serializer. Um, once that's all installed, and I'm pretty sure I pause it uh, because and it's fun to watch the time. See, now that was two minutes to install that. Um, then when I go into the configuration, uh, it, it'll show you the user interface for how you can do time via the config area. So down here, we have time static, and you can generate the site uh, once you've generated the site. And the way it works is effectively wherever the site's going to be generated, whether that's your test site or your live, you just put it in there. And then you can use the download tabs to download all the assets or preview. So at this point here, I don't have any content in the site. So I now pause the video and I go off and I make three pages of, oh, I'm about to pause the video, and I make three pages of content, each with an image. Here we go. So that took eight minutes to make three pages. That's my local environment's not good. That's why I've got my MacBook Air doing it all. So anyway, um, some lower mips and an image. That's all I've really done with this. I should really disable the search and put in a Luna, but I wanted to demonstrate that I'd started this process 10 minutes ago. I've got the guts of a uh, 
a site and I've made like a really basic menu there. So now what I want to do is get over to deploy this site because it's that good. So I made a S3 bucket, called it Tome Meetup Test, and uh, enabled it for um, static hosting. So when you enable it from static hosting, it automatically gives you this URL, although you can use root 53 to alias it for something else. So if I go to the home page, there was no content, as I just showed you there. Um, so now I'm going to go into my uh, Tome environment. Hey, buddy, I'm just giving a little talk. I'll be here in a second. Yeah. Hi, just... honey. Uh, uh, you can go to the museum that I made. I'll check it out I'll in just a few minutes, buds. Okay. I just got to finish talking. Just two seconds, little man. That's a USB key. Sorry, mate. I'll just be a second. So, um, at this point, this is really important. This this is really important. This to uh, clear your cache, because if you don't clear your cache, um, you can get some funkiness, particularly if you're swapping between a dev and live build. So. Clear your cache, and then if you're using a dying Mac, that will take a while, particularly with those three massive pages I just made. So anyway, while uh, I don't know if I paused it for the cache clearing, because that's thrilling. Um, I didn't. So now that that's done, it's really quite, it's as simple as going down into the Tome area, and uh, we're now ready for uh, building the site. I really should have paused it for this little bit, shouldn't I? Or I could have just kept talking when my son walked in anyway. So then you go to generate a static site. Or ideally, if you're using Drush, it's just Tome, it call, a Drush Tome colon export. Um, anyway, you put it in and you submit. Now, if you're not using my machine, this next part can go really quick. When I screencast as well, it goes even slower. But I have built sites with up to 40,000 pages using this. It does take a while when you're getting up to those levels. Um, when this was, when I looked into it, apparently it was designed around a case of building up to 10,000 pages. So the fact I've pushed it to 40 is going well beyond what was imagined for it. But uh, typically for a site that's got, because a lot of the sites I have done this with are about up to about 300 pages, it does not take long to run through it. This is not a great example of it, but that's more to do with the machine. So it initially, trawls through all of the structures. So you've got whatever your path auto structures are, and then creates folders for each of them. I will showcase that in a second. But um, we have a, effectively, it gives you a little preview button after you finish term generating, which is quite cool. And that allows you to kind of test it locally to see that your static assets have actually um, built in the right way. So I'm going to leave that. Then I'm going to go over to my terminal here and deploy the site. Uh, that's right, I check it out. So initially, um, it deploys it in your site root, so not inside the web root. So I've got to go back, and it generates a folder called HTML. And inside that, for all of the areas, so you've got like the contact form, node, uh, search, user, it will generate um, folders and inside those subfolders. So what I want to do now is push this up to my S3 bucket. So I've got a website. So I just be using the um, AWS command line interface to do a deployment. So that's just effectively because I'm already logged in uh, and that, that just pushing it up to the bucket. Apparently, it took a while to type those three words over there. I was very sick on the weekend when I was doing this, by the way. Recursive. Apparently, I can't spell recursive. Oh, good. I was ho hoping I picked that up before I. Cool. All right, hit enter, Morgan. There we go. So that's now going to push up my static site. And if I refresh over here, you'll see that all of those static folders that were generated from Tome, like that have the path auto and alias folders, are all going to nicely be there as the objects load. Cool. There we go. And if I go back to my site, which was not found before, refresh the page, I have my Tome website. So, I mean, if you look at the top here, it's 309. So it took less than, and that's with my dying machine, not like 20 minutes in total to, to spin up a site from scratch, put a bit of content into it. Now, I do click on the RSS feed here to show that you do have to build a few components, like when you're doing this properly, so that XML 
is not really mapped into it. And obviously that search you'd want to replace with either like a, a search as a service like Algolia or use um, that uh, Luna search service. But I'm kind of, yeah, I, if you look at that, that looks very similar to my locally hosted one. It's static, it is stable, and it is doing its thing. So that is Tome as a very, very quick uh, screencast with me cutting out a lot of bits because my machine's there. So why, why Tome? Why not um, Gatsby? Why not uh, Hugo? Why not Jekyll? Well, it's built by Drupal Master, and he knows your stuff. Tome knows about views. It knows about its routing, path auto. It's built into Drush tools. It understands the Drupal cache. So, but the real use case that why I think it's great is that it gives you, at the end of the day, what is Drupal good at? It's good at data modeling. It's good at um, permissions around that type of thing and, and creating content types that reuse data and share well between it. That's where I think we're, you know, why I still use it after 11 years and why I still love being in the community. So that I still get to use that data modeling side that I'm passionate about, but I still, but I don't have to worry so much about the weekly security releases. Um, works really well with Drupal 9, Composer 2 in particular, once I finally got around to that, that's the lazy part. Um, I was on a version of Lando that was super out of date because I didn't update it. It's using Drupal 8.8. Uh, 8.7, because I didn't have to worry about as much. So doing this talk made me put my local up to 9 to find out that it works really well with Composer 2 and Drupal 9. And look, it's an ecosystem. It's not just like a, one of those kind of site sucker tools that just trawls over a site and then just outputs kind of spaghetti stuff. It's given a lot of thought to how a Drupal publisher would need it to work. So, you know, you've got that JS search content as code, you can commit your content, you can have syncing of content from your local to your remote. And it has deployment tools. I didn't look much into it, but there was a Gatsby, there was a Gatsby flavor of it as well. So it can be super simple as well. Like you could just build it as a HTML directory, like I demonstrated and deploy it via effectively FTP. Like it's as complex or as simple as you want. So the gotchas. Um, I found that if you've got a view that has more than 50 pages, it does struggle to churn through all of those pages. So if you've got a view like a taxonomy term that might have several thousand entries in it and you're paginating to 30 or 40 per page, kind of goes through the first nine pretty fine. It usually does the last five or six, but the middle pages you've got to pay a bit of attention to. Uh, you're not supposed to use the UI too much like I just demonstrated. Forgetting to clear the, clear the caches when switching domains. So I I had like a um, dev environment plus a live environment. They were on different URLs because I was reasons. Um, if you forget to clear the, clear the cache, it can be a problem. It works better at the top or subdomain, not from a folder. So using that example, mstrong.info or beta.mstrong.info, not mstrong.info.beta, does full paths and it gets a little bit funky when you start putting sub paths in. Uh, if you are logged in as admin. So when I talked about not worrying about security, make sure that you turn off your warnings because otherwise it actually renders them out. As I discovered when I did screen tester, screen reader testing, and it's got like in a toast, this needs to be updated, outputted. Anyway, um, they're my learnings. So my last little bit, because um, I've been speaking far too long, I just looked at the time, my apologies. Want to get involved? There's a Tome uh, channel on Slack. Uh, there's a tome.fyi where the docs live. Um, and look, this is a case that's happening a bit in the Drupal community and no dad, doubt uh, Vladimir will cover this when he talks about the news. But uh, the maintainer, Sarah Mortensen, is also, I believe, in one of the core uh, maintainers um, or in the Security Council. His work no longer does, his workplace has moved off Drupal, a bit like um, Jacob with web form. So in, as the, you know, agencies diversify or people get different jobs, some of our really important core people are making decisions whether or not to stay or to leave. And we need to find ways that the open source software movement of, you know, just hoping people do stuff, either have a good employer or have their free time. We're looking, there's, there's got to be better ways. So Sam's on GitHub sponsors. I 
sponsored the lowest tier personally, which is like five bucks a month, which it felt pretty bad because it's not that much for the amount of work he's put into it. But um, think about Open Collective with Webform. Think about this if you've got some something and you want to keep the community going. It's a, it's a really important thing to do. And that is the end of my talk. I will now stop sharing just in terms of the uh, presentation. Okay. Stop presenting. Stop presenting. Thanks. Morgan, can you hear us? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Now we, get, now we can clap. Okay. Now we can clap again. Um, when you uh, said it's generating it as admin, uh, is there security issues with that? Like some pages may not be. What, what does it do? Does it handle draft pages by not publishing them? Or? No, 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 nothing like that. It's just uh, it, nothing like that. It's the um, just the security warning ribbon that's in the toast at the top that says there is a newer version of Drupal available. So that just okay. outputs to the front end. If you don't turn if you don't turn it off by by default, admin have that turned on. So you just manually need to turn that off. That's it's it's a nothing step. As admin, you have access to all pages. What happens if there's certain pages that anonymous users can see and certain pages that other roles can see? Do they does it how does it handle that? I don't know. I haven't tried. <laughs> I think it doesn't. It only renders ah. everything that's public. It doesn't render anything. Yeah, but if you're admin, uh, your everything's public to you. Uh, no, but the Tom looks after the um, after the permissions. Even if you are admin, it only renders it looks the, as anonymous. Ad, user. anonymous yeah. Okay, that'll do. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Jana. You, you've tried that. Like for me, I've got pages, and obviously, it doesn't render render anything that's admin only, but it does render out that message that there is a newer version, unless you disable it to say don't show the messages that there's uh, newer versions available. But yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, because I I use Tom for um, quickly theming and styling the website, so. It was delivered, but it was still in the works. And actually, when you use browser sim, it's much faster to use it on a statically generated website rather than on a Drupal. So browser sim will reload um, Tom generated website pages. And all I need to do is just uh, update some SAS, and it, it recalculates, uh, recompiles SAS into CSS, and then the Tom reloads quickly in, um, with the browser sync, and then you get this uh, really quick sort of uh, experience. But that's what uh, in React you can get really quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's quite nice. Yeah, it's like something like with Tom, you can generate this website and give it to the designer, and the designer will provide you with CSS and SAS for this website and say, hey, that's done, and then just put it in your theme. And, so they don't need the access to the full website and they won't complain about, oh, it's run slow. I still don't have to set it up. Yeah, and they don't have, they, they can just use this HTML in yeah, their that's, own environment. That's a good yeah. idea. Um, so when you use time, um, it stores it as a static site. Uh, does that also include um, converting the different pages into HTML, or is that is it still being stored as CSS? Um, PHP. No, it'd be HTML. HTML. Yeah, straight H HTML, CSS, and JavaScript only. It 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 minifies all the, the CSS and JavaScript as well, and just puts it in that the site's default files directory CSS JavaScript. Mm -hmm. How does it work with Bootstrap? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I've used okay. uh, I did I did it with um uh, the Barrio theme and oh nice beard, Tony. <laughs> well, you do, do, yeah, it's just come along long. Uh, look, lockdown has treated the beard well. Um, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I did it with Barrio um, and did a sub theme with Barrio and yeah, seemed seemed to go fine. 
uh, yeah, on that note about the uh, Bootstrap 4, that's what I sort of, I had the website that was bare bones, the Bootstrap 4 website, and the designer had like whatever in mind, so it was much quicker to um, generate this website, very unstyled Drupal website into Tom, and then give it to the designer, and then they just have all the tools and they provide the CSS, because all the design is, is just the CSS so that they'll do all the re reflow and all the colors and all the fonts and all the beautiful margins and things like that. And then, yeah, you put it back into your theme and you got the Drupal um, working nicely. Do you have any more questions? Uh, how long did it take to generate 40,000? Pushing three hours, <laughs> but that was that, I'd like to do it on my uh, my new Ubuntu machine though because I was doing it with Lendo and Lendo obviously runs on top of um, Docker and Docker's VM does like th three or four file uh, rewrites before it actually talks to the the Docker VM to the window um, the Mac OS. So I'd like to retry that trial on my Ubuntu machine and see how long it takes there, because I reckon it'll be way faster. Oh. It, was, it wasn't even on the server or anything like that. I well, wouldn't use the server. That, that, I, I've got my hosting down to less than $3 a month through this. <laughs> no, 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 I mean to, to, to generate the... Um... No, no, just, just my Mac. Mm, yeah. Okay. What would be a, a very useful use case for Tome could you elaborate on that? Uh, look, I think anything that uh, doesn't require huge, doesn't really leverage, um, so anything that doesn't require a whole lot of content changes or a site that you're kind of maintaining where there aren't a huge number of uh, remotely distributed editors and uh, anything where you're kind of trying to leverage a little bit towards that kind of Jamstack kind of metaphor where you've got like a shell that's all created and then you're just inserting uh, other components using JavaScript frameworks. Yeah, I've got a website that I reckon that one blog post that month posted to it. That sounds very tempting to get me off through the late. We had a project where we had a bunch of uh, designers who obviously didn't have desire or technical skills to install Drupal on their machine. So we actually converted the existing project uh, to um, existing project to Tome and gave them just HTML files so they can uh, run Bootstrap SAS and CSS, and that's it. So we didn't even bother of uh, trying to install Drupal on their machines. They have all the pages, all the front-facing pages, and they were styling them. That was one of the use cases. It's another good case, actually. Wikipedia can be another big example. Uh, Wikipedia is a good example. Is ABC welcome? welcome. Uh, AB, ABC does uh, convert to study? Uh, then <clears throat> they're not static. They compile um, the, the server side uh, JavaScript. Oh, okay. So then not really. Uh, another later uh, example is uh, Bootstrap Help. Mm. So I was presenting about Bootstrap last month, I think, or two months ago. So they used to use Jekyll, now they use Hugo, or vice versa, as opposed to Tom. So just another static site generator. And uh, yeah, so their help pages are use uh, static site generation, but not Tom. Thank you. Uh, maybe it could also be used for um, uh, funnel pages. So if you have a single uh, single page site and then use a funnel page where people are then funneled to another site. Right? Sure. Yep. Do it in HTML. <laughs> yep. It's usually something because HTML is secure, as, as Morgan mentioned, uh, you don't have to install updates very often. So your Drupal can sit behind firewall being very outdated. Uh, not like we recommend it, uh, <laughs> but um, not every company can afford the dev sitting there um, 
updating the Drupal, but you can actually have a Drupal as a generator and then generate. And now the amount of hostings that actually host static web pages is massive. So it's all started with Netlify. Uh, at the moment, I just got in last two days, I got email that the Cloudflare is jumping on a static web page hosting. So you actually can have a HTML page hosted right on a Cloudflare node, which is the speed advantages would be traumatic. Uh, and yes, yeah, Sam has built a Netlify direct deploy tool into time as one of its core features. So I think he imagined a use case whereby you would just run Drupal locally and then just use the deploy Netlify tool and just have your site running on Netlify that looks after the SSL side that looks after CDN distribution. So, yeah, and it's tiny, tiny hosting cost. Uh, how, how about a contact form? That's not possible? Uh, I wouldn't imagine. I think it would be a bit like how I did um, my Algolia search where I just inserted it, used the JavaScript service as a service and inserted it in there. So I would probably say that would be your best way if you needed forms to insert a form that way. Yeah, usually those forms are provided by third party. Um, so it will be a third party JavaScript. And this, because your static website doesn't have, uh, doesn't have a database, it doesn't have any sort of processing power to do mm. So it will be just a pure HTML or JavaScript that will insert that form onto your website and um, post back will be into some third party place to send um, any sort of form data. So yeah, with the uh, static website, it's, it's a very um, interesting idea in terms of, oh yeah, your websites are loading super fast, but then yeah, I want this and I want that and I want um, search and I want contact forms and I want some sort of any other um, uh, interactions or user login, user login, apparently. Um, mm. Well, SD claims that they can do that as well. So there's next level of static pages, static website generation. It's, uh, yeah, it's a whole industry of its own. So I, I guess in Gatsby, where you have the whole this infrastructure, maybe your login, like JWT token will be somewhere in third party or your Google account will be somehow linked with cookies or I don't know. So I haven't tried that yet, but. Yeah, apparently they claim you can do shops and full-on um, uh, user experience even with just uh, static websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and if you change if you change something, then it's actually just a press of a button or a line of code uh, in Drush, and then it will override everything that was there. Is that is that how it works? It depends how you do the deployments. You can it can be as simple as what I just demonstrated, where effectively I used SSFTP and put it over the top, or you can store your code, your content as code and use Git, which is really cool, I think, the second Thank option. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, thanks, Morgan, for a big round of applause to Morgan for doing the present, for being seen in the presentation and being a uh, streaming ninja. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you get into Tome, support Sam, because he's, um, I think, yeah, he's, he's looking, he wants, I think he wants to stay, but he's looking for reasons to keep him in the community. <laughs>